Hi, welcome to my channel. So today I'll show you how to cut out a large design using the Silhouette Cameo. Many of you have asked for tutorials on how I use the Silhouette Cameo and I apologize that I haven't posted more on this. Um, I know last year I had done one video on kind of the basics of you know getting started with the Cameo and just cutting out a small design and I just have not gotten around to doing any more than that. But today I thought I'm going to work on a large sign for myself that I'm planning on having downstairs in my new office or studio space. And I thought if I'm doing that anyway, I'll show you guys how I go about to do it. The main difference is when cutting out, you know, huge designs, of course you don't use the mat. So you just run your vinyl through without the mat. And there are a few tricks that I've learned along the way and I'll make sure to share those with you. But before I actually take you over here on my computer and get started with that, let me just rave for a little bit here. I told myself before I started this video, I'm not gonna make this long because I could literally go for hours about this awesome machine. And I've said this many times before, this has probably been the best investment I've ever made. I know when I got it around three years ago, I had to save up for about a half year. Um, I had this little fund called my Cameo Fund and I finally had enough saved up to get it and it has paid itself off over and over again. And something I am just amazed about is how it just keeps going and going. Um, some days when I run it almost all day, I look at it and I think, you know, it has every right to give out. Like most machines would have to be maintained or repaired or fixed or just, you know, a new one take its place. But no, this machine just keeps going. And probably because I said this, it'll probably give out today. But even if it does, it has done its work. Um, I just marvel. Um, I, I guess I go back to the days when I used to make signs uh, and I used to sell them too, where I used carbon paper or transfer paper um, to you know, trace my letters onto wood. And then I'd paint in all the little letters and I get all these stiff and sore shoulders from doing it. And I just couldn't hardly believe my ears when I heard that there's actually a machine that makes it so much easier and it's really not that expensive. So to me, the Silhouette Cameo 3, that's the one I have, has been worth every penny. I would encourage anyone who is thinking of starting a small business or just you really like to decorate and create things, even just for yourself, it pays to have one of these machines. That way you don't have to go out and buy the signs. You can make your own. And if you're if you want to start an Etsy shop or just be you know have a be a vendor at a local fair or whatever, um, you definitely need one of these machines. Um, I don't think they're so hard to master. Um, I always tell people if I can, anyone can. I did have to watch some tutorials right when I got it, but mostly I've just been kind of self-taught with uh, you know feeling my way through. And I know I've said this before but I'm pretty sure I'm just still using the basic functions of this machine. I think it even does so much more, but uh, it does what I want it to do, and I guess that's what counts. And I even heard, I think there's a new one out, a Model 4. Um, I think that's awesome if they come out with new things, but to me, I'm like, what more would you need? So I'm kind of curious. I may end up checking into it just out of curiosity more than anything, like if it does, if it actually does more than this one, but... Um, for me, this Cameo Model 3 has been um, perfect for my business. So end of rave there. Um, I'll get to the point. I'll take you guys over here on my computer and try to explain things as I go on how to create a large design. And since this basement space will have just a touch of industrial style, I thought it would look nice to paint this sign black and then trim it with old weathered barn wood. So I found a shelf, or I'm not sure, was it a desktop at one point that someone had just given to me. They didn't want it anymore. It was actually brand new, and they had no use for it and knew that I sometimes got use out of things like this. So I went ahead and cut that piece to a rectangle shape. It was almost the measurement that I had written down, not quite. So I sanded this wood and then gave it a coat of polycrylic. So 
So the first thing I want to do here is open up my Silhouette Studio program. And the sign I want to make is actually a scripture out of Ecclesiastes where it says, you know, if you work with your hands, do it with all your might. And I thought that would kind of fit with my um, Etsy space downstairs. And I also have it on my Etsy shop. Um, I thought I would just copy and paste it to make it simple here. Um, highlight it, right click, copy, and then bring it on over to the studio, right click and paste. And automatically it will paste it using the Arial font. Um, that is of course not what I will be using, but um, what I want to do next is figure out how many lines I want um, there to be on my sign. And I think I'm going to go ahead and split the scripture into two and then have the Ecclesiastes 9.10 on a third line. Um, I'm going to have my split in between the do's here. So if I double click on that, um, I will get a green box out around my design here and that will allow me to either erase letters or add or in this case I will hit enter and that will bring it to the next line here. Um, I also want to get rid of the quotation marks here. Um, hit enter again and that brings the Ecclesiastes down and if I, I'm going to drag this little box in here um, just far enough that it won't, um, you know, split up my lines here. But um, if I click off of the design and, you know, back on, um, I can work with it this way too. I'm going to go over here where, where the, the text um, style panel is and hit the box here that says justify center. That way my design will be centered. You don't have to do that, but in this case I want to center it. And the next thing I want to do here to make it easier, since this will be a large design here, I want to zoom out on my screen here so that I have plenty of area to work with here. So what I want to keep in mind here is eventually I want to ungroup all this. That way I can separate my, my lines here, move them around you know, how I wish, and then also the Ecclesiastes, since I want that to be a whole nother font, I will need to separate it from the rest of the, the words here. Uh, but before I ungroup everything, I want to change my font to the font I actually want. Because once you ungroup something, you can't change the font for some reason. Or I haven't figured it out that you, know, that you can. So I will go over and find my font that I want. In this case, it is um, Gazella, I think is what, how it's pronounced. I love this font. It's one I've been using a lot recently. Now I want to ungroup, so I right click hit ungroup and as you can see it ungroups everything like all your little letters and even your comma and the little dots above the the eyes are separate um, so what I want to do here is get rid of the Ecclesiastes 910 here and just drag it down I think I will probably need to type a whole nother one since I can't change the font anymore but for now we'll just work with this the actual scripture here um, before grouping it back together, I think I'm going to go ahead and just enlarge the W here on whatever. Sometimes I really like to see that first letter be bigger than everything else. I kind of like that. Oh, okay. It could be just a tad smaller. What I can do here too is just zoom my screen in here to enable me to see better. So I'm going to highlight everything and then weld it first and then right click again and then group it. What the weld does, it, it, it connects your letters together, especially if you have a cursive font like this. Um, it'll nicely connect them together and not make any weird little cuts into your letters. And I'm pretty sure I can no longer change the font here if I group this together. And yeah, it does not enable me to change any fonts here, so I will have to make a whole new Ecclesiastes here. So 
so I will erase this one. And I kind of forgot I did want this to be in capital letters. And I have a font that I like that is called Perpetua that I'm going to use for Ecclesiastes 9.10. Bring this in. And I'm going to make it a whole lot smaller. And I will just guess on my centering here. The other thing I'm going to do with this, um, the Ecclesiastes 9.10 here is just drag it down a bit. I just want it to be a little bit taller. I think it just looks better that way. So now what I want to do is just highlight the whole design here and group it together. And then I want my sign or the actual words to be around 19 by 32 inches. I had actually measured on my sign, uh, you know, taken the the full measurement and just came in three to four inches maybe on top and bottom and the sides and I came up with a measurement around 19 by 32. It doesn't have to be exactly that but that's kind of what I'm shooting for and right now as you can see the design is only around four inches by 10 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and use the corners here. If you use the corners to drag your design you're not warping it or you know pulling it in any way. It'll just stay the same. Uh, the aspect ratio will be the same, but you're just enlarging it. I'm going to drag it out to 32 inches just to see what happens here. And again, I will need to zoom out my screen to give me more room to do that. So this looks about yeah 32-ish, and I only have 12 inches, and I was aiming for 19. So what I'm going to do is just drag um, this out just a bit. Um, if you do it too much, it won't look right. But as you can see, my actual letters are just getting taller instead of you know just the the whole sign getting bigger. I'm just dragging it out. I'm going to go with around the. I, th I was thinking 18, so we'll yeah we'll go to 18 here. I think that looks about right. Of course, I can't you know I can't cut out wider than 12 inches, so I will need to cut my sign off somewhere here to in order to you know cut it out. So what I want to do here as you can see it's almost 18 inches so I want to ungroup it again here and this time is just ungrouping this from this. These are two separate. So I actually probably need to yeah I need to ungroup this too since this is wider than 12 inches. So I hit ungroup again what I'll do is probably just do the bottom half of the sign first here. I'm going to group everything together. As you can see, I highlighted everything here, including the little uh, dots here above the eyes and the, the period. And I'm going to group this together. So right now my design is 11 inches by 20 inches. So that will work perfectly. And the next thing to do here is to go over here and change my size on my you know mat here which I'm not going to be using a mat so I need to set that to in order to do that you go to the top right hand corner and hit the the page setup panel and here it gives me some measurements my width will be 12 inches wide that's how wide my vinyl is and I will need to set the length here which again if we look at our design here it's around 20 inches. I always add two inches onto that because they, their cutting line moves so far in. So you need to add two inches onto your measurement here. So I will change this 12 to 22. And as you can see, that made my piece of vinyl 12 inches by 22 inches. And I want to set where it says cutting mat. I want to hit the drop down and click none because I don't have I'm not going to use a mat. So this is ready for my design and to do this I need to rotate it 90 degrees. So I highlight my design here. Um, I go over here to the transform panel. It's where these three little rectangles are at. Hit that and then I hit this little circle arrow here and 
90 degrees and that flips it around 90 degrees and I put it onto my vinyl here. And you just want to make sure everything's within the red lines. The red lines are the cutting lines and it looks like everything is in there perfectly. Let's move it up just a little bit. And if, you're, if you can't really see or if you can't really tell, you can always zoom it in just to make sure everything is within the red lines. That looks perfect. So I will get off the screen here and show you guys how to load the machine with the vinyl. So I'm going to use white vinyl. And the only vinyl I use, guys, is Oracle 631 vinyl. It is the best vinyl out there, if you ask me. Um, I will link some down below from Amazon. They have a good price for it. I always get it there. And of course, I need this to be 22 inches. So to load it here, I need to make sure my rollers are set to cut just the vinyl and not with the mat. Uh, so what it is here, basically, these are the only settings I've ever used, and that is for the mat. I will show you guys by getting the mat here. If I use the mat, as you can see, it is perfectly aligned with each little roller here on the ends. And if I just run a vinyl through, it's not quite as wide. So of course I need to set my little roller here further in so that it is on top of the vinyl here. And there's actually conveniently some notches cut into the roller bar here that I can just uh, you, I, first I have to release the bar here by putting this little lever down here and then I turn it to unlock here and slide it over and I find that groove in there for the vinyl and then lock it again and then put this little thing up again and it is ready to feed the vinyl into the machine. So what I do is I try to align it the best I can uh, with this line here and I try to put it in nice and evenly and then I hit load and sometimes if you still feel like it's not quite even you can always release the the bar here the roller bar and slide it around just the one end here just to make it you know nice and even tighten it up again and then it is ready to cut so we'll go on over to the screen again so I am ready to send this design over to the machine. I hit send up here on the right in the right corner and it is set for vinyl which is perfect and I have the ratchet blade. I hardly use the auto blade. I always use the ratchet blade. I like to have manual control of where I have my numbers uh, set at. Um, it, set, it tells me to set it at one but honestly right now my blade is really old so I set it at I think it's set at three right now. It's not quite as sharp as it, as it was at first, so I do need to uh, change those settings sometimes. And you can kind of see as you work with the Cameo um, how, you know, if it needs to be um, set for, you know, less or more. And same with the force. Uh, sometimes I'll, you know, work with that, but usually I'll just leave it the way it is. And it is ready to cut, so I will just hit send here. So I have a trick I want to show you guys. So I'll sh pause this so you can hear me. Um, anytime in the middle of a design, you can actually pause and then hit resume and it will continue to go just as it was going before. Um, if you are cutting a long design, much longer than this, especially this will happen sometimes, where as it gets to the end of the vinyl here, it will suddenly not be underneath these rollers anymore. It will maybe go just a little bit crooked and there's not much room here for, um, you know, it, it has to really feed in there straight or it could run off the roller and that will ruin your whole design because it will slide around and it won't, you know, have any hold anymore. So a way around that is you can actually take a strip of vinyl. In this case, I just cut off a piece of, you know, black vinyl and you could even use just any paper it wouldn't have to be vinyl. Um, but what, what you can do is slide it underneath 
your vinyl here and then take a piece of tape in this case I just cut off a piece of transfer tape and attach it to the white vinyl like this and that way you just now made your piece of vinyl just a little bit wider so it will as it gets to the end here it will still have a place for the little roller to be on you know to control it if that makes sense um, I have done that quite often especially again in the long designs where you think you're feeding it in straight but as it gets to the end you know it kind of is, isn't quite straight anymore and this is always a fix like it works every time in this case I don't need to use it because I don't have such a big piece and everything seems to be going in really straight but I just wanted to show you guys that trick So now for the next part here, this first sentence here in my design, as you can see this is 32 inches long and I will need a vinyl piece that is 34 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and take this all off here and adjust my size from 22 to 34. Go ahead and rotate this, hitting the rotate circle here and at 90 degrees. Bring it on over here. And as you can see, a lot of my vinyl will be going to waste in here. So what I'll often do is just add other little designs that I, you know, sell on my shop, um, just to not, you know waste this vinyl I guess. Um, I have a fresh egg stencil here that I sell a lot of so I will just go ahead and see if that fits on here. Let's do a copy and paste. That will be perfect. Looks about right. And I also have some bunnies that I am going to add to this. I often use those to fill in some of these uh, spaces here just to use up all my vinyl. So there I feel I kind of used up uh, most of the space here and I'm ready to send it on over. So the first one I'll be doing here is the, the first line to my sign and then the fresh eggs stencil. So the two tools that I always use and could not be without is this little weeding tool here. Um, this came with my Cameo and I couldn't be without it. Uh, now the scraper tool also came with it, but you could switch this out with a credit card or just something, uh, you know, kind of flat and hard like this to, uh, to scrape with. It's always easier when pulling off the vinyl to not just pull up and off. It's easier if you kind of lay your vinyl down um, and just kind of slide it off. It also really helps to work in a well-lit area to do weeding. Um, it's just easier for me anyway to see. So before actually applying the vinyl to the sign, I always lay it you know, on my signs uh, just to make sure I have everything nice and even and in the middle. Often I will use a piece of tape or two pieces of tape to mark my corner where you know, my transfer tape should be then once I transfer this. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I find that I have the easiest time uh, to transfer these decals you know, onto a surface if I use my old worn out transfer tape. Um, in fact, when I tear off a new piece, I will often take it over the sofa, um, any surface that is you know, kind of linty, um, even the floor sometimes, uh, just to get it less sticky. For me, it's just easier. The less sticky it is, the easier it is to use it. I just checked the price on the Silhouette Cameo 3 from Amazon. It looks like it is around $210. If you order from the link below, it will not change the price for you guys, but I do get a small commission from Amazon. 
hope this tutorial was beneficial to you guys. Um, it got a little longer than I had hoped for, but I just felt the need to explain everything, I guess. I can't wait to hang the sign down in my new Etsy space downstairs, which is slowly coming along. Hopefully here in the next week or so, I'll be able to uh, move down there. And as always, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you got something out of it. I try to post a video every Wednesday, anything from painting to decorating, any do-it-yourself type projects. So I look forward to seeing you in next week's video. Bye!